Welcome to Python 310 Cool New Features. My name is Chris and I will be your guide. In this course, you will learn all about the new features packed into the 310 release of Python, including better error messages, structural pattern matching, type hint improvements, changes to zip, and new multivariable statistics methods. Python 3.10 was released on October 4th, 2021, and was actively being worked on since May of 2020. The key features of this release are better error messages. Python aims to be both powerful and beginner-friendly. Up until 3.10, a lot of the syntax error messages have been rather cryptic. You might not notice them because you're used to them, but if you ever stop to read their contents, you might see how challenging it could be for a new coder. Not only are the messages themselves a little confusing, but they often point to the line after the problem was triggered. Within most error messages, there's a little pointer showing where on the line of code the error occurs. In addition to improving indications of what line the error happens on, 3.10 also adds more accurate error highlighting with these pointers. A big new syntax structure in 3.10 is the pattern matching statement, which introduces two new keywords match, and case. If you've come from another programming language that supports a switch statement, you'll be familiar with the basics, but Python's implementation goes far deeper than that. There's a whole bunch of type hint goodness in Python 3.10. There are improvements to unions, aliases, and guards, as well as better support for type hinting decorators. There's also a new introspection call, allowing you to get information about annotations used for type hinting at runtime. The standard library zip method has a new parameter that makes it safer to use by raising an error if you attempt to zip things of unequal length. And there are also three new functions in the statistics library, covariance, correlation, and linear regression. And finally, there are a whole host of small improvements like default text encodings, asynchronous iteration, multiple context managers, additions to the sys module giving info on the interpreter, and dropped support for older SSL. In the next lesson, I'll show you all the new ways the compiler will tell you you're wrong, and that's a good thing. In the previous lesson, I gave you an overview of the course. In this lesson, I'll be talking about the error message improvements introduced in Python 3.10. Many different kinds of errors raised by the compiler have been improved. This includes better indication of where the error happened and better indication of what the error was and where on the line it took place. In the top window, I'm going to show you Python 3.9, while in the bottom window, I'll show you the new differences in 3.10. I'll start out first with a bunch of errors with dictionaries and comprehensions. Strictly speaking, this first one isn't a comprehension, but it's very similar. It's an embedded generator. Statements like these must be wrapped in parentheses to be legal. In Python 3.10, the same error gives a better indication of where the problem lies within the statement, highlighting the entire generator expression. This next one is an actual comprehension. To better understand the problem, let's first look at some working code. This is a dictionary instantiated using the standard library zip function. Here, zip is taking the first item from the first string and combining it with the first item of the second string and creating a tuple. It does this for all the items in both strings, and then these tuples are turned into key value pairs by the dictionary. Here is the exact same thing, but using the dictionary comprehension instead. With me so far? Okay, let's cause a problem. Like with the embedded generator before, parentheses are required. This error isn't too helpful. It says the syntax is invalid, but not y, and it points to the for keyword instead of the xy part that actually caused the problem. Now, let's look at this in 3.10. That's much better, isn't it? 
How about some easy to make dictionary mistakes? Here, I've missed the comma after February. And the 310 version? Three ten is much more specific. Let's do something else. This time, instead of the comma, I'll miss the value altogether. Another very generic message. Which is far improved in three ten. Consider this small program in the top window where the month's dict is missing its closing brackets. Let me run this in 3.9. Good old invalid syntax. And now in 3.10. You see not only what went wrong, but exactly which opening bracket was mismatched. Now let's look at improvements around exception blocks. Once again, I'm back to Python 3.9 in the top window and 3.10 in the bottom. Exception blocks can catch multiple exceptions through the use of parentheses. Let me show you a working example. And now, here's what happens if you forget the parentheses. Let's try that in 3.10. In 3.10, there's a highlight line showing you where the cause is and a nice clear message to go with the syntax error. What about if you forget your accept clause that goes with the try block? Your usual vagueness here, and in 3.10. Much improved. There are also improvements in other kinds of blocks as well. Missing colons go from invalid syntax to a specific indication of what you forgot. A lot of programming languages allow value assignment inside of a condition block. This makes for a tricky to find bug. If you accidentally use single equals instead of double, you assign the value and that returns true. Because this problem was so common, Python decided to disallow assignment in condition blocks. Python eventually added the walrus operator to allow this, but it is still a special operator. Regular value assignment can't happen in a condition clause. Here's an example of 3.9's syntax error. And now the improvement in 3.10. It's a nice little hint there to go with it. F-strings are one of my favorite Python features. I can't imagine going back to the days of %s or format. Although they are very powerful, there are still some restrictions within an F-string. One of those restrictions is the use of the star operator. If you haven't seen the star operator before, it's used to expand a list in place. Let me start with a working example. Consider this list containing the months from quarter one, and then another from quarter two. You can combine these into the first half of the year list by expanding them with the star operator. That's great, but you're not allowed to do that in an F string. The improvement in 3.10 isn't a lot, but it does explicitly make an indication of the problem.
Not as drastic as some of the other improvements, but still useful. Python's use of white space for coding blocks is the favorite complaint of non-Pythonistas. However you feel about it, the error message when you forget to do it has at least improved. Here's 3.9. and a subtle improvement in 3.10 that indicates the block type that expected the indent. Some command line terminals now support suggestions when you make a typo. Now Python's REPL supports the same concept. Note that underneath, this is all implemented in a method called PyAirDisplay, and not all REPLs use this method for error management. But for those that do, you get the new feature. Let me import collections. And in 3.9, I'll misspell named tuple. Now I'm going to create a variable named fool. And then access foo instead. Let's try these in 3.10. Did I mean named tuple? Well, yes, indeed, I did. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, don't be fooled again. That's it for the errors. Next up, Python's answer to switch.